what I mean by that is, you know, the reason why they're having these problems come upon them is because they're doing the things in verse number six. Lo you know, they haven't loosed the bands of wickedness. They're, they have these heavy burdens on people. They're oppressing people and they're bringing people under bondage. And what he's saying is, why don't you start off Instead of trying to go through these steps of proclaiming a fast to, to, to solve your problems, why don't you just stop being wicked to people? Why don't you stop oppressing people? Because that's where your problems are coming from. This fast isn't going to help until you get your heart right, until you get this, this wicked sin out of your life. Then you go and you fast to the Lord. Right? So I'm not going to fast to God if I'm committing adultery, if I'm doing all this other stuff. And, and we see it didn't even work. It didn't work for David. Now he ended up getting his heart right with God, but he had already done the wrong. And what's happening with the children of Israel here is that they're saying, oh, well, we're fasting for this, right? We're, 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 we're trying to entreat you, Lord, but you're doing all this wickedness. And God's judgment's still going to come on you. He's not going to hear you because you're not recognizing the source and the root of the problem. It's not, you, you don't just, just walk through a bunch of hoops to just say, well, you're forgiven now. It's like in the Old Testament, people would give a sacrifice for their sins. And this is what I was alluding to a little while ago. Now, we know the Bible teaches very clearly that the blood of bulls and of goats can never cleanse you from your sin. The Bible teaches us very clearly that all of those sin, all those sacrifices, they were all ultimately a picture, a representation of Jesus Christ who is to come and, and provide the ultimate forgiveness for sin. However, it was still under, it was still the law that when people would transgress, they'd bring a sin offering, they would bring these offerings to God as to, to obey God's commandments and obey his laws. That was something they were supposed to do. Now, even though it's part of the law, if someone is just willfully sinning and just saying, well, now I got to bring this, this sacrifice to the Lord because we're, you know, because this is, this is the law is what I got to do. If they just go and do that sacrifice, but their heart is not like, they're not sorry for what they did. They're just like, yeah, whatever. I want. I just need to go and do this. And, okay, yeah, fine. But, but there's, no re there's no remorse. There's no grief. That's not going to do anything in God. God doesn't, he doesn't care about the actual, just like the, the, the animal being sacrificed. Like just, just, for the, just for the sake of being sacrificed. He cares way more about your heart getting right. Now, the, the sacrifice has meaning to it. It's representing of It's symbolic. But it's not, it's not doing any good if your heart's not right. It's just, it, it's... That's why the Bible says, he says, you know, you think that God, God doesn't delight in your sacrifice as much as he delights in your obedience. And I, I'm totally mis, uh, misquoting that scripture. But... Um, the Bible says to obey is better than sacrifice. Obeying God's commandments, that's way better than just performing sacrifice. And it's the same way with fasting. To just live right and do good is way better than, you know, jumping through some hoops of, of just, oh, I'm performing this fast. And that's what the children of Israel were doing in Isaiah 58. They're just trying to look and appear spiritual and just check off all these different boxes, but their heart wasn't right. So if you were going to plan on fasting and seeking God, the first thing you want to do is make sure your heart is right. You know, if you have, if you have issues that's going to be, you know, coming in between you and the Lord because you just have some wicked sin, deal with that before you go trying to entreat mercy of the Lord. Because why would God be merciful to you while you're still involved in some extreme wickedness?